Today we will be talking about another interesting concept related to linear regression. While it's not specific to linear regression, we'll see one of the problem which occurs when we try to solve linear regression using the normal equation method. So if you remember in the normal equation method, we said that our estimate of theta is given as x transpose x, the whole inverse, times x transpose y. The important thing to note here is that the x that we're talking about is containing the first column as all ones to account for the theta naught term. But in certain scenarios, this x transpose x is not invertible. You should think for a second about the scenarios in which it is not invertible. Let's take one concrete example. Here's this x, again I'm mentioning this x, the way we're talking about the x is containing the first column of all ones. And these are the two features which are present in our input data. Now for such a matrix, you can look at x transpose x and you will be able to notice that it is not full rank. Thus, this matrix x transpose x, uh, you cannot solve using the linear regression method if you're looking at the normal equation method of solving it. We will be looking at the code example in parallel. So if we create x1 as the first column of all ones, x2 equal to the second column, corresponding to 2 into the first columns and a y as 468. You can here itself notice that my column, my second data column is dependent on the first as a linear combination. So we can see it's 2 times x1. Therefore, it is not adding any new information. We can now create the x matrix by appending a column of all ones, which we do here. So if we do these both, our x would be created in a similar fashion to as what we have been seeing in the slides. This column of 2, 4, 6 is 2 times this column of 1, 2, 3. Therefore, you may notice that x is not a full rank matrix. It's a rank 2 matrix. And if we were to then try and solve using normal equation, which is inverse of x transpose x times x transpose y, we will see for this data, we have we encountered an exception, which is the linear zebra exception in NumPy, which is the matrix is singular, which is it is not invertible. And then if we print out x transpose x, we can very clearly see that first it's a symmetric matrix as you would expect, because it's of x transpose x like format. If we look at the columns, you can see that the third column is, is, is two times the second column and similarly, you can see the third row is two times the second row. So therefore, x transpose x is not full rank. Therefore, if we were to also confirm using this routine from NumPy linear zebra called matrix rank, for the matrix x and matrix x transpose x, we can see both of them are rank deficient. Both of them are rank two whereas their actual full dimensionality is a 3 cross 3 matrices. So therefore, if we were to use this kind of a data in a linear regression like setup, using the normal equation method, we will not be able to compute the correct answer or we will not be able to compute the answer because x transpose x is not invertible. Now here I had shown using numpy.linearzebra.inverse, I will ask in the assignment, in the upcoming assignment, why using something like numpy.linearzebra.solve is recommended instead of computing the inverse. Second, now let's try and use scikit-learn's implementation of linear regression to try and learn the relationship between x and y. Now importantly, I am not passing in the column of ones because scikit-learn automatically creates something equivalent of that to compute the intercept term. So my data is just x1 and x2, two columns, and I call a fit method on data and y. And if I look at the coefficients and intercept, I'm able to learn them. So I am not facing any issues in using sklearn for this kind of a data where it's very clear that one of the columns is dependent on the other column. It's a linear combination of the other columns. So the next assignment question for you would also be that 
you have to figure out why scilearn is able to solve this whereas if you were using the normal equation method we are not going to be able to solve x transpose x whole inverse times x transpose y so clearly scilearn is using some other method and if you look at the coefficients they seem to be correct so you can say that our label is 4 you are writing 4 to be 0.4 times uh, 0.4 times 1 plus 0.8 times 2 so 1.6 plus point let's see so the coefficients that we have obtained are <coughs> right so the intercept is 2 and the coefficients that we obtain are 0.4 and 0.8 so what we are saying is that 4 is equal to 0 0.4 into 1 plus 0 0.8 into 2 plus 2 which is correct so 2 plus 2 is 4 6 equal to 2 into 0 0.4 plus 4 into 0 0.8 plus 2 so we can verify that the relationship that you've learned is indeed correct so sklearn is giving you the correct answers now first we'll discuss how to solve if such an issue occurs then we later on see certain situations in which we'll be able to get certain features like this <clears throat> the first method so this problem is known as multicollinearity where we are not able to compute x transpose x inverse because one of the columns one of the input features is a linear function of the other input features one way to solve this problem is known as regularization we also discussed regularization in the concept of reducing overfitting but in this case what we are saying is that so we had obtained x transpose x which looked like this if we can somehow make some very small change to this x transpose x then it might become a, f a full rank matrix so one such way to do that is to add a very small quantity to the diagonal if we do that then you can notice that 56 let's say we add 0 0.001 you can notice that 56.001 is not exactly 2 times 28 and this also becomes 14.001 so thus looking at these values we will not be able to we can't say then the third column is 2 times the second column so in this case I am showing 1 e minus 5 I create identity matrix of size 3 comma 3 I multiply that with epsilon so it becomes 1 e minus 5 0 0 0 1 e minus 5 0 and 0 0 1 e minus 5 I add that to my x matrix and now if you notice my x matrix is 1.0001 so point 10 to the power minus 1 e minus 5 is added to all of these diagonal elements and now if we look at the matrix rank of x it is 3 it's a full rank matrix now because of this operation and now if I wanted to learn the relationship between x and y using the normal equation method you can see that I am now able to learn this relationship without having any issues like in the previous case I had the singular matrix which x transpose x was singular we could not have inverted it so we solved that problem the other way to do that is to drop the columns which are not adding any information so in the sense that you can drop the variables which are linearly dependent on the other input variables so if I had taken only the x1 column and I am adding, adding column of 1's so in that case my x would look like the column of 1's and then my first input feature 1, 2, 3 and as expected I will be able to learn a relationship between x and y using this because now you can look at the fact that x transpose x will be a full rank matrix and thus invertible the other way to avoid multicollinearity is to avoid something known as the dummy variable trap so we now look what the dummy variable trap means so dummy variable means that we are now creating certain dummy variables which did not exist in the existing data one way in which this commonly occurs we have to create dummy variables or some extra variables is when we are trying to encode certain categorical features let's take a concrete example we want to model the pollution in new delhi let's assume it's a variable p we say that it's a linear function of 
certain baseline pollution, certain pollution related with the number of vehicles, certain pollution related with the speed of the wind and certain thing with the wind direction. Importantly, wind direction is a categorical variable. Let's say that we have in our data, we have four kinds of wind directions, north, east, west, south. The first question to you is, is it okay to, so, so numerical methods and scikit-learn like libraries will not be able to directly use north, east, west, south as strings. So you need to encode them as some real numbers. The first question to you is that, is it okay to in, use the encoding where north is zero, east is one, west is two, south is three, or something like that, where you have k categories, so you assign them numbers from zero to k minus one. I want you to think through this. So assuming you've thought through this, let's go in the code and let me show you how you might first create such a data set. Again, always recommend to do a bit of coding to match the theory that you're learning. So in this case, I am creating some 12 records where the wind speed is some random number between, integer between zero and nine. The number of vehicles is something between 100 and 500. The direction is a random choice between north, east, south, and west. Um, and the pollution is something, again, a zero between something and 100. I create a pandas data frame. Now, if I had done the encoding which I had mentioned, so first let me, before doing the encoding, let me confirm that scikit-learn will not work if the direction is a string. <clears throat> so I call this method fit data where I create a linear regression object and I just fit x and y. As it, ex okay, just one second, I think I forgot the import. You can see the error that could not convert string to float for west, which is the first row, the direction in the first row, which is happening because you need to encode this to a real value. Now the first <coughs> encoding that I'm suggesting is ordinal encoding. You can import the ordinal encoder from scikit-learn preprocessing. And all I'm saying is that let's create this encoding where now each of these elements north, east, west, south is replaced with something between, with something which is either zero, one, two, or three. Now my data frame looks like this. Now perhaps I can use scikit-learn to learn the relationship between pollution and the input variables. I can do that, but I want you to again take a pause and think why this is incorrect. When we're using the encoding zero, one, two, three, why is it incorrect? Assuming you have thought through Firstly, this works. So if you give this to the machine, if you give this to scikit-learn, scikit-learn does not throw any exception, which means it's a valid data to give, but whether or not it's the correct thing to do is what you need to think. So if I show you the relationship learnt between the input features and the output, it is some, some constant or some, some intercept plus something into wind speed plus something into number of vehicles plus, or sorry, minus 0.61 into direction. Now what this is implying is that if the direction is zero, one, two, three, so if we have the directions sequence given as, let me just run this. So north is zero, south is one, west is two. So because of this, now we will notice that the, the pollution in north would always be lesser than the pollution in south, would be always lesser than the pollution in west, would always be lesser than the pollution in east, because this intercept term is negative, sorry, this coefficient of theta is negative, which is by giving this specific ordering or this relationship between the, the categorical feature and some real value that we are giving, we are forcing certain behavior that certain directions are likely to be more polluted or less polluted, which is not correct thing to say because we force that order. So therefore we need to think of something else. Let's go back to our slides. The 
we'll be looking at something known as n variable encoding or one hot encoding <clears throat> so one hot encoding asks this question <clears throat> is it it creates n for n variable choices that you have it creates n new dummy variables or n dummy variables for north it has also it's also got one hot encoding because you have a single place where you have a one the remaining places you have a zero so only a single hot place you have the remaining are zeros so north wind blowing from the north is it north yes one the others would have to be zero so you can notice that only one of them would be one the others has to be zero so therefore we can create these four new columns in our data set and we can discard the original column if we go to the code and see that i'll be creating this uh, one hot encoder object from scikit-learn and i pass it certain outputs and if i show you so it's looking at the df direction and it's giving you three columns so just a second i think i change certain things let me just rerun the entire notebook because i had given certain other options where i was looking at lesser number of output variables let's just once run through the entire notebook and see right so now if you notice you can verify that i have four pieces here right so if i call this one hot encoder df directions i should see four different columns being created is it north is it west is it south is it east in some specific order that order i'm, I'm getting from here so the first column first row if you see it should be the wind direction should be a west we can verify that in the original data the first is west and south south east so we can verify west south south and east so that's how the new encoding has been done only one of them would be one the others have to be zero but one important thing that you can see here is that we can write this is it west is as a function of the other three like it can be written as because we know that all four of these columns these these values across the row have to sum up to one because only one of them would be a one so all of them have to sum up to one so therefore we can write this is it west is equal to one minus is it east is it north is it south so we can verify that if i do one minus is it north is it south is it east and minus is it west it will always be zeros which is as per our creation of this setup. Now think for a second why this might be a problem. So if you've thought through, let's first just go and create a whole data frame out of this by using these new features. So I had the wind speed and number of vehicles as my original features. I have added these four new features. Is it north, is it south, is it east, is it west or whatever order they were in. Right. Now, if now when I have to solve this using the normal equation like method, I have to add a column of all ones. I do that. I stack a column of all ones to x, and now my x augmented matrix has the first column of all ones. This columns, these four columns corresponding to the one hot encoded vectors. And now, if I look at the shape, so I had twelve rows. I had originally two features, three features. So I've removed one feature and I got additional four columns and I got this all column of all ones. So therefore I have a matrix of the shape 12 comma seven. Now, if you can notice that if I look at this row, the first column, I subtract this column, this column and this column, I will always get this last column, which is the expression that we'd seen. 1 minus is it north minus uh, 1 minus is it north minus south minus east 
minus west will be always a zero because they have to sum to one. So they or you can look at it this way that you can look at you can see the first column is the sum of the last four columns always which means that you can write one column as a linear combination of the other columns which means that the matrix x augmented is not a full rank matrix which we can now verify our x augmented matrix is having a rank 6 and our matrix x augmented transpose x augmented is also of rank 6 whereas our original matrix was of shape of shape 7 comma 7 so it's not full rank thus we will not be able to compute using the normal equation method you should try it at your end perhaps it will still work and then that's left to you as an exercise to figure out if it's working or not and why so this is x augmented transpose x augmented you can here again notice that I'm not doing x augmented directly. I'm looking at x augmented transpose x augmented. You can notice that 12 equal to 1 plus 3 plus 6 plus 2, 43 equal to 1 plus 16 plus 23 plus 3, so on and so forth. So therefore, here we can verify that the first, or in this case, the 0th column is the sum of 3rd, 4th, 5th, and 6th column. So this was n variable encoding. In contrast, we can also use n minus 1 variable encoding. Now we don't really need to represent is it south as an additional column because it will have all zeros if we can encode it using just one less variables so we say that north wherever north occurs you put a one wherever east occurs you put a one wherever west occurs you put a one and south is where all of these are zeros is it north is it east is it west all of them are zeros so this way we have reduced the number of columns required to encode the categorical representation by one. At the same time, you should think why this will prevent from the problem of multicollinearity. So I am calling this now one hot encoder. And I pass in this argument drop equal to first, which means it will drop the first question which we had. And therefore, if I'm looking at the column names, I drop the first. I look at from the second position onwards, I look at the columns. My 12 rows now corresponding to these three questions. They We have removed one question. And I am then again doing the same operation. I create the X augmented matrix. And I can now compute, so my X augmented matrix is of size 6 comma 6. And my rank of X augmented and X augmented transpose X augmented is also 6. So therefore now my x augmented is an x augmented transpose x augmented are full rank matrices thus they're invertible. So these were few important tips so that we know what kind of encoding to do. And another question that you can think about that could we have used binary encoding? something like 00011011. Now this is requiring fewer number of bits, thus fewer number of columns. But we do not use this because it introduces again dependencies amongst the different features. So now what we're saying is that in the upper order bit, higher order bit, west and south are correlated. And in the lower order bit, you can see that west and north are correlated and east and south are related. So again, you're proposing certain orderings amongst the different features that you proposed. Now let's look at the dummy variables and try and understand what they would mean by looking at a very simplified example. So let's say we have a data set where we're just trying to predict the height of a person given the gender. It's a very simplified problem that we are giving here to understand. Let's use an encoding where we ask the question is female. Now this is n minus one variable encoding. <clears throat> if we used n variable encoding, we would have asked two questions. Is female and is male? But we can notice that we don't need to ask those two questions. Just asking one question should be enough here. So let's say our data set is like this. Now we have three females, heights 5, 5.2 and 5.4 and two males, height 5.8 and 6. The question is, how would you interpret theta naught and theta 1? What is the physical significance? Think for a moment and 
assuming you've thought through let me show this in code also i have created this data set of female 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 male male and the heights are 5 5.2 5.4 5.8 5 and and 6 i am using something known as a label binarizer i could have used the same one not encoding with a certain variation of the inputs that i'm giving but essentially i am not getting 0, 0, 0, 1, 1. and in my slides i am using the flipped version of these bits so i just do 1 minus the transform so now my bit sequence corresponding to these five rows is 1 1 1 this is corresponding to the question is it female 1 1 1 0 0 and i can now fit my linear regression model on this binary inputs and my output variable y my question to you is to interpret the theta naught which is the intercept term and the theta one term so first let's just look at all the places where we have males and we look at their heights and their heights come out to be 5.9 which is the same as this which is theta naught so theta naught is 5.9 but this is also the mean of all the males that i have in the data set of the heights of all the males in the data set similarly you can notice that if i considered all the females in the data set and took the mean of their heights that turns out to be 5.2 and this coefficient that I've obtained is the difference between the mean heights of, of women and the mean heights of men. So that's how we can interpret these terms. You can also just write down everything in, in math and then you should be able to see the same thing. So what we're saying is that the height of the ith individual, which is the observed height is theta naught plus theta 1 into is female plus epsilon i. So if we put, if we look at the columns where we have the male entries, is female entry feature is zero. So therefore we have height, one height for one individual is 5.8 and height of another individual is six. Both of them you're trying to estimate why a single quantity theta naught. So therefore if theta naught has to best represent 5.8 and six, it picks up the mean which is 5.9. And so thus theta naught represents the average height of the male. Similarly, you can choose theta naught plus theta one based on the, the records that you have, five, 5.2 and 5.4, because is female has to be one for you to get theta naught plus theta one. So therefore th the best estimate for theta naught plus theta one you can obtain using these entries, but you already know the value of the best estimate for theta naught. And once you do that, you will get the theta 1 to be the difference between the average female and the average male. So we'll end this lecture at this point.